Uh, welcome back to our class. Today we are going to be looking at uh, what we call cloning. Yeah, we have seen that um, this has been a problem to many grade 12s, uh, how to explain the process of cloning. And sometimes when they bring it in exam, a student find it difficult uh, in, in, in answering questions. So today we're going to look at the process of cloning, basically uh, cloning of the dolly ship, and then some of the questions which can be asked about uh, this uh, content. And then we're going to try to answer those questions and also guide you how to answer if it comes to uh, your paper or if it comes in the exams. Uh, don't forget that cloning can be uh, medicinal. Uh, it can be cloning basically for medicine. For medicine, uh, for example, production of insulin, or uh, cloning of uh, organisms. Yes, I'm not going to go into the types of cloning whereby you talk about the therapeutic uh, cloning and then uh, meaning that you're trying to clone just a, a part or a tissue, a stem cell, which is going to replace uh, the damaged tissue or organ. And then the other one could be cloning the, the whole organism. But in this case, it can be either natural cloning or can be uh, artificial cloning. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we, we find that um, we use the same type of genome to uh, multiply or to duplicate or to produce identical organisms. Yes. So let's look at uh, what you call cloning. So we are going to explain this process. Um, in this process, you need to have two sheep. The first sheep, let me call it sheep A, and then the second sheep, sheep B. So if you look at our book, the distinction material, you have sheep one and sheep two. So, Ship A, for example, if I want to produce the characteristics of ship B, and I don't want to produce the characteristics of ship A. So it means that you have to maintain the DNA of ship B. All right, let's start. So what do you need to do is, what do you need to do? You need to do the following. For ship A, yes, uh, it must be, you, you must get a cell from ship A. This is a cell. And then you must also get a uh, ship B, a cell from ship B. This is also a cell, okay? Cell, cell from ship A and cell from ship B. But these cells are a little bit different. Remember that a cell a full cell is supposed to have all the content, including the nucleus, and also here. But where do you get these cells? Here in ship B, because I want the characteristics of ship B, I'm going to get what you call uh, a somatic cell. Somatic cell. Why do we need a somatic cell? We'll explain that. But somatic cell means a body cell. A body cell. Don't forget that somatic cells, they have what you call 2N. Yes. So in, in, in this case, for example, if the ship has 62, um, it has 62 maybe uh, chromosomes, then automatically this is going to be 62. If it is 1N, it's going to be, uh, ha -ha, it's going to be uh, 30, 31 chromosomes. So uh, in this case, if, if, if you look at a uh, ship A, this one is going to be, uh, a gamete, a gamete. In this case, it must be an ovum, meaning that uh, the first ship, it, ship A must be a female ship because you can't get an ovum from a male ship. And ship B, because I want the characteristics of ship B, doesn't matter whether it's a male uh, or a female. Yes, as long as I want those characteristics. So it means that now I need um, the ovum. This, this, this is an ovum. So the next step is uh, now I need, I've need. i got this ovum. And then I've got, don't forget that ovums are one N. 
they are haploids. Well, these ones are diploids because it's a somatic cell. So I have these two cells. I've explained uh, which type of cells you are supposed to get from the organism. Yes. So because I want the characteristics of ship B, of this ship, therefore, I'm going to keep the nucleus. Why? Because the nucleus contains the genetic material. And then the shell or the out, out the casing of this ovum, so not of ovum, the casing of this cell, I'm going to throw it out. Meaning that I'm going to throw this uh, out. Yes. So I throw it out, but I keep the nucleus. Why? Because I need the characteristics of ship B. And there is no way I can get these characteristics except when I go to the nucleus where the genetic material is found. Then I go to ship A. Ship A, uh, I want the, the, I don't want the characteristics of ship A. So what do I want? Here, because I don't want the characteristics of ship A, I will throw the nucleus out and then I will keep the casing. So meaning that now this one becomes an empty, empty, uh, uh, new, uh, empty uh, ovum, empty ovum. Remember, this is an ovum. Yes, so it becomes empty ovum. I always ask my students that if I have uh, water, I put it in the bottle of uh, John Walker, and then someone finds you drinking water from John Walker bottle. What will that person say? Definitely, that person will say that you are drinking John Walker or Savannah, whatever. If I have John Walker, I put it in the cup where you drink tea from. Someone comes in, finds you drinking that John Walker in a cup. What that person is going to say? That person, I don't think the person who said that you're drinking John Walker will say that you are drinking tea or you're drinking water or juice, whatever. But when you're drinking John Walker, what does it mean? Why am I saying that? What you appear to be outside is what we take. So what happens is this is an ovum a casing of the ovum or empty ovum and this is the nucleus don't forget that this is 2n so these two must combine so meaning that i'll bring this empty ovum and i'll bring this this case uh this nucleus then i'll put it here using a mild electric shock we use a mild, I can ask you which method is M. It's called a mild electric shock. So now what happens is um, if I have this here, uh, we say that now this is a casing of the ovum. If someone comes in and asks you, what is this? We're going to say it is an ovum. Why? Because the casing, the casing is for ovum. But don't forget that the nucleus we used was 2N. When does ovum looks like that? It might not necessarily be ovum, but when does it have this situation? Let's go back to reproduction. Just a little. And then we say that, remember, a sperm, yes, has a nucleus and the ovum, has a nucleus. During the process of fertilization, the nucleus of the sperm will enter the nucleus of the, will enter the ovum and they fuse. They form, the casing is what? Is ovum. You see? The casing is ovum, but what is in the nucleus here is, is a mixture of the sperm and ovum. But what's the number of the, the, the chromosomes is 2N. So when you go back here, we shall see that this structure looks like this. And how do we call this structure? This structure, we call it, we call it a zygote, a zygote. 
Meaning that what we have formed here will look like a zygote. And the moment that zygote, zygote-like structure forms, then it will undergo a process called mitosis. So this zygote, uh, the normal zygote, will undergo uh, mitosis to form a ball of cells, yes, where embryo is formed. And then exactly what happens here is the same uh, process. So here, this is going to undergo a process called mito mitosis. And then a ball of cells is formed or embryo is what? Is formed. So the moment the embryo is formed, what happens now? What is the next step? Um, okay, now I've formed the embryo here. I've formed the embryo here with a ball of cells. Don't forget that you form a, 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 a ball of cell, uh, cells called the uh, uh, morula, hollow ball of cells called blastula, all that we are skipping, all that uh, uh, information. So now you have the embryo here. So what happens before you form the embryo, these balls, these balls or ball of cells, we get them and then we insert them in another ship, ship C. How do we call this ship? Because I have to be with a lot of ship C. How do you call these ships? Ne? We call a, uh, don't forget that a ship is a ship, uh, whether it's pura or what, uh, is a ship. So I'm talking about different types of ship. So, okay, so you, you form these different types of what? Ship, but of the same kind. Ne? We call them um, uh, for, uh, surrogate, surrogate what? surrogate a uh, ship so this ship i'll bring the embryo here i'll put it there i'll bring this one i put it there i'll bring this one put it there I'll bring this one because i'm using the same genome the same genetic composition yes then automatically each ship here is going to produce the same kind of ship meaning that they're going to have they're going to look alike they're going to be like uh twins don't forget that twins are two yeah or triplets, but they're going to look alike, but you're going to produce thousands and thousands and thousands of these organisms. So what does it mean? It means that now this ship has formed uh, the one which has formed. So let me say that this ship is going to give birth to ship D. You see? So ship D because I used the genetic composition of ship B, yes, ship D is going to look like ship B. Why? Because I kept the DNA of ship D, of ship B. And I threw away the genetic composition of ship A so that I remain with the casing of the ovum. So that I, when I combine with this and this, I form a zygote-like structure. Yeah, it's a zygote-like structure. Yes. They can even ask you a question. Why is this one not regarded as ovum? Because we use the, the casing of the ovum. Don't forget that the ovum or gamete are always haploid. But this is a diploid. Yeah. So now when you go back to our distinction material book, yes, is here. Uh, this is the process which I was trying to explain, that cloning of uh, Dolly sheep. And remember Dolly she, uh, Dolly is 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 a, is, a, is is a singer. I think in in America they named this after her. So I think you know Dolly Petra or something something. Yeah, I think those people you know now so 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 that you don't forget uh, this. Anyway, let's start. You have sheep one and sheep two. Ship one is you get a cell from ship one, yes, an adult ship one and ship two. You get a cell from ship one, yes, and then you also get another cell from ship two. But which kind of cell do you get from ship one? Somatic. This must be a somatic, somatic cell, meaning that it's 2N. You get uh, the, 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 another cell from ship two, but this is an ovum, meaning that is a gamete. 
Yes. Don't forget that gametes are 1N. So what happens? You remove the nucleus of sheep 1. It means that if you remove the nucleus of sheep 1 and you maintain it and you throw this casing of the cell, then automatically, since you have kept the genetic composition of sheep 1, it means that you want to produce a sheep which looks like sheep 1. Then you have the um, sheep 2, you got the nucleus, you remove the nucleus, you throw the nucleus away and you go with the casing. As I explained to you about that scenario of Johnny Walker and the Savannah drinking it in a cup, someone won't uh, think that this is Savannah in a cup. You say that you're drinking water. And then if you're drinking water in, in a bottle of Savannah, oh, Johnny Walker, we shall say that. No, man, you are drinking John Walker. Yes. So the casing will determine. So you guys, take note the way how hmm. you behave. So the way how you behave will determine how we take you up. We might not see what you do behind or the scene. What? No, what we see is what we take. All right. That's how people are. All right. Now, here you have this nucleus and this ovum, you combine them using a mild electric shock. As I explained that, they will ask you about this method. How do you call this method? We say that the method is, is, is using is electric shock, using a mild electric shock. So now, now after that, you form now this structure. This is not an ovum. This is not a gamete. Why? Because this nucleus is to end. Yes. So it means that it looks like, looks like a zygote. Why? Because it is 2N and the casing is the ovum. As I explained it here, that it, it will look like an ovum. It will look like an ovum because of the casing, but because of the genetic composition, then it's going to look like a, 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 a zygote. Now we put this. Yes into other uh, uh into other ships different ship different many of them many of these ship yeah so so that now um this surrogate ship they will help us to develop the baby and then now how is this ship looking like it will look like the ship which gave it the genetic composition hence this ship is exactly the same as the ship as we say that this ship why does it look like that because it gave to us given the, the the genetic composition of this ship was used it's like someone who goes to the shop does the shop yes you buy a spam yes you put it into another person, for example, during the, the, the proper process. That person is not the owner of the kid. No. This one got the sperm and the other brought the ovum. And then now they combine and they put it into another, another person to carry this baby. Sometimes you call them the borrowed babies. The person who is growing this baby is not the owner of the baby. The owner of the baby is the owner of the ovum and the owner of the sperm. But the baby will look like the one who gave the genetic key composition. So that's how we do clone this so-called dolly ship. Let's go and look at some of the questions concerning about this dolly ship. Questions are easy. Yeah, now this question came in a different version, in this case, they're saying that this is not a ship, but the process is the same. It's the stallion. Stallion means it is a horse. I think it is a male horse. When they talk about a stallion, it, they, they mean uh, a, a, a male horse. All right, the diagram below shows the genetic engineering, uh, that's the process, meaning the process they are talking about here is a cloning process cloning a donor uh, a donor cell was taken from muscle of muscle remember this muscle is a somatic cell of a male champion horse yes you see 
stallion to create a, a new offspring. It means that since we obtain the DNA of the stallion, then we're going to have to produce a baby which looks like a stallion. Cell from the muscle tissue of the male stallion horse, uh, champion horse, and then uh, what happens? They are telling you the nucleus was removed from cell. Uh, yes, what happens here? The nucleus placed in uh, in the ovum, an electrical shock result into the ovum starting to divide. Which process? We said that the process is mitosis. The process here, which takes place, is mitosis. Yes, don't forget that. Yes, because they didn't talk about it. And then they're saying that here the ovum was removed, meaning that uh, they kept. The ovum was removed from the female horse. Yeah. Yes. So what is next? Yes, in this case, the nucleus of the ovum is removed and then discarded, meaning that they threw away this nucleus and then they took the casing. While here, they threw away this casing and they took the nucleus exactly what i try to explain but this is, is, is the same question but they're using just they're just changing the the, the animal the, this time they would be talking about a zebra and then someone said no sir taught us a stallion sir taught us uh, a dollar it's the same thing you must not go off né? yes so it's the same thing it's just that you have to know the principles of answering and understanding of these concepts uh -huh. so now what happens is this will come in here yes and then when they combine together remember they have talked about the method they use with a small or a mild electric shock and then this structure c is formed remember i told you that this is a zygote like structure eh? in this case we can say that it is a, it is a, it is a zygote but it's not uh the actual zygote that side but it looks like a zygote because it has all the characteristics of zygote so the ovum divides ovum divides normally they called it an ovum but in actual sense is not ovum why because of the genetic composition maybe they are calling it ovum because the outer or the outline or the casing is that one of the ovum as i explained to you using the other example of johnny walker <clears throat> then they're saying that the embryo placed in the uterus of the adult female horse so now this the embryo is now placed into the adult female horse what happens which we say that in this case we call it uh, a surrogate mother and then now it starts to develop it it forms the, the structure of uh, uh, embryo develops so it is put into this and then now it develops into another stallion why stallion because we used the, the dna of this stallion question all right name the genetic engineering process shown in the diagram above how do you call this cloning simple process named uh produced of an b which process produce ovum B? So the process by which ovum are produced, we call them eugenesis. But don't forget that they undergo what we call meiosis, and then eugenesis is being produced, as uh, uh, and, and ovum is being produced. So the process is eugenesis or meiosis because they are not specific. Yes. So uh, they're saying that, why is the donor cell extracted from the champion horse why is the donor cell why did we extract it from the champion because we want to produce a sheep which looks like the champion horse yes we want to produce a sheep which looks like a champion horse meaning that it has the characteristics of the champion horse uh -huh. The next question is the explain why only uh they're saying that explain why only the nucleus of the donor cell is used why why do we uh use the nucleus of the donor cell if you come here the donor cell is 
when you come here the donor cell here when you you, you you got it from the champion horse so they're asking you here a question explain why the nucleus of the donor cell uh, is used is because it contains the genetic material for the champion or for the donors for the donor what donor horse meaning that we want the characteristics of the donor horse therefore we kept the nucleus because it contains the genetic information or genetic material that is the dna mm. all right then they're saying that a somatic cell when you talk about a somatic cell we are talking about a body cell and then this case it is deployed in a horse contains 64 uh, many people they take this uh uh they, for granted some of them they don't know some of them they always think that all chromosomes in an individual is 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 what is is 46 it's not that's a human a horse has 64 drosophila minoningasta has eight so now uh -huh. so you have to know exactly what are they saying in the question don't memorize don't memorize your head will become big so don't memorize you're supposed to use the information they give you in the exam so how many chromosomes will there be in a structure structure a uh -huh. let's go to the structure a structure a is the yes the nucleus check nucleus of the horse but remember, this is a somatic cell because it's a muscle cell. Don't forget that here I explained it and I say that this is 2N diploid. I've explained it. Yes. Yes. You see, it's a diploid, meaning that since it's a diploid and the, 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 the number of cells they get, the number of chromosomes they gave here is 64. So the diploid is going to be 64 and the haploid is going to be 32. 32. Yes, so it means that here the chromosome is going to be 64. And then ovum B, let's go and see ovum B. Where is ovum B? Ovum B is here. Ovum B is going to be uh, the half of 64 because it's haploid. So it's going to be 32. Muscle cell in organism D. The moment they say, The moment they say muscle cell, automatically they are talking about somatic cell. So the answer here is going to be 64. Even if I don't check the organism, but the moment they say muscle, those are somatic cells. As long as they don't talk about the ovum and the sperm, the rest 64. Oh, the rest are, are deployed. Let's go to check. They're talking about the surrogate uh, horse. Last question. They are saying that, explain why the ovum labeled C cannot be considered a gamete. Why ovum, why is it? Yes. Why even, why do they even call it ovum? Actually, it's wrong. Why is it not called a gamete? They are saying, why ovum? The moment they say ovum, it means it's a gamete. So it means that that's a, they, they, they were supposed to modify that question and it looks better. Ne? Yes. Anyway, let's continue based on what they said. Why is this structure C? This, I think that, that would have been the better, the better language. Ne? Why is this structure C not considered a gamete? Yeah, that one would have been a better language for scientists to understand why is structure c not considered a what a gamete why is structure c why because yes it's because it contains genetic material is 2n ovum cannot be with the 2n remember these are haploids so it means that since this nucleus is uh deployed 2n therefore it cannot be considered an uh, a gamete Hence, I told you that this looks like a zygote. Hence, I called it a zygote-like structure. Not over. Yes, it's a zygote-like structure. Guys, don't forget that this is a distinction material book. You cannot find any question in any question paper which cannot be answered by this book. 
Use this book from the links below. You will be able to get a distinction. Guaranteed. Yes. And these different colors means a marking point. So the next time we will come and look at uh, the different uh, questions. Let me check here. Let me check here for you. And I see something here. Is there any other question? If you have any question uh, you are struggling with, let me know in the comment section below. And, or um, let me know in on the WhatsApp. I will be able to help when i get time Bless yes you. so thank you very much i'll see you again uh m as usual good